Hello students, this is an example from section 5.2 and it's an example with polygons inscribed in circles. So in this example I'm going to be using a regular pentagon but you could use a hexagon or a decagon or any kind of triangle or whatever, any kind of polygon inscribed in a circle. Um, just a note for a polygon to be inscribed in a circle means that all of its vertices these, that's those points where its line segments connect, all the vertices right here, right here, those are all touching the circle. Okay, so at that point they touch the uh, diameter or the perimeter of the circle. Okay, at all those points. And those are called the vertices of the pentagon. Okay, so here's our example. It says a regular pentagon is inscribed in a circle of radius 15.8 centimeters. And we're supposed to find the perimeter of the pentagon. Okay, well let's first define what all these things mean. Regular, hopefully you remember from geometry, regular means that all of the sides have the same length. So we know that that is, if that's, we're calling this side right here from here to here, S, we're labeling it S, that line segment. Each of these line segments is going to be the same length, so we could label each of these S. Okay, that's what regular means, that all of the sides have the same length. Pentagon means it has five sides. It's inscribed in a circle of radius 15.8 centimeters. So if this is the center of the circle, the distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle is the same as the radius. And that's also the, um, we're forming a little triangle here. So the length of this side of the triangle is the same as the radius, or 15.8 centimeters. Okay? And then both of these are going to be the same, obviously, since they're both radii of the circle, this side of the triangle and this side of the triangle. So what we're trying to do here is get to a point where we can use right triangle trigonometry, in other words, sine, cosine, tangent functions, to solve this problem. Okay, so I've created a isosceles triangle. We can't use sine, cosine, and tangent, though, until we have a right triangle. So how do you think you could get a right triangle out of this situation so that you can use sine, cosine, tangent information to figure out the length of a side? Think about that for a minute. How can you get a right triangle out of this? Okay, hopefully your geometry is coming uh, back to your memory and you are remembering that since this is an isosceles triangle, you can bisect the isosceles angle right here and create two right triangles like this. All right, so now we have right triangles, and now we can use sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, we do need to know the measurement of this angle, though, right? If I'm going to bisect that angle, that's great, but it would help if I knew what the measurement of it is. So what would be the measurement of this angle? Well, this is a regular pentagon, so that means I have five of these triangles in here, All right? And since this is regular, since each of these sides are the same length, and uh, all of these radii are also the same length. I have a bunch of the same bunch of uh, the same triangle in here, a bunch of similar triangles, which means that I know that this angle is equal to this angle, is equal to this angle, is equal to this angle, is equal to this angle. Okay, all of those angles are the same measurement. And all the way around, how many degrees are there in a circle? That's right, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So what would be the measurement of one of these? pieces. We have five of these, right? And all five of them together add up to 360. They're all equal, so 360 divided by 5, which gives us 72, is the measurement of one of those angles. Okay, so this is 72 degrees right here. This one's 72 degrees, 72 degrees, and so on. So that means when I bisect that angle, I'm cutting it in half, right? I'm creating, taking this isosceles triangle, I'm cutting it in half and creating two equal right triangles. And when I bisect 72 degrees, I would get uh, 30, what? 36, correct. Okay, so 36, and this one right here is 36 as well. Okay, so now what do we have? We have a right triangle. We know the length of its hypotenuse, right? This right here, this radius is the hypotenuse. We also know uh, this angle right here, and we want to know the measurement of this length here. We actually want to know the entire length of S, but since it's bisected, if I find half of it, I can easily multiply that by 2 to get S, right? So let's review that. We have an angle. We want to know information about the opposite side. We have information about the hypotenuse. 
So what should I use? I have an angle. I want information about the opposite side. I have information about the hypotenuse. Hopefully you're thinking sine. We would know that the sine, oops, sorry. All right, we know that the sine of 36 degrees is equal to opposite, which would be 1 half s, right? The length from here to here would be 1 half s, divided by the hypotenuse, which I know is 15.8 centimeters. Okay, and that gives me information I can use to solve for s. Multiply both sides by 15.8, and I have 15.8 times the sine of 36 is equal to 1 half s, and multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times 15.8 times sine of 36 is equal to s. And that gives us s equals approximately 18.6, rounding it to one decimal place. Okay, are we done? Let's go back and read what we wanted. We wanted the perimeter of the pentagon. We found the length of s, which is a fifth of the perimeter, right? Because we have five of those pieces, five of those s's added together. 5s gives us the uh, perimeter. So let's multiply 5 times 18.6 and that will give you 93 centimeters. All right, and that is the length of the perimeter. All right, and we're done.